Hi, jewelry makers. Thanks for joining me. So today I've got day three. So um, what I'm going to do uh, is I'm going to bezel set a sterling silver ring. So if you've opened your birthday calendar, what you will have had in there are two beautiful uh, tanzanite cabochons. So you can either, you could use this technique if you wanted to make earrings. Um, I'm going to set one of them. So I'm going to choose to do a ring, uh, but you could absolutely use the same techniques uh, if you wanted to make a pendant or you wanted to do earrings. So what we're going to try and do and get into the, in the hour, um, are quite a few um, finer jewelry techniques working with sterling silver. Uh, so we're going to make a ring shank. So you could use this again if you didn't want to work with the cabochons and you were going to just do stacker rings, you could absolutely do that. But then we are going to hopefully also learn how to set, um, set the stone as well. So we're going to set it in the uh, sterling silver in the bezel strip wire. So if we have a look at some of the tools that we're going to work with, uh, so we're going to work with our soldering setup, which is, so we've got here. So I'm going to work with um, my torch, obviously, uh, my soldering block. I'm going to work with some uh, reverse action tweezers. I am actually going to work with three different sorts of uh, solder as well. So I'm going to work with my hard, my medium and easy, and I'll go through which one it is that I'm working with. Um, I'm going to also work with, I've got different sorts of pliers. I've got bail making pliers, flush cutters, uh, some chain nose pliers. I'm also going to work with a variety of um, hammers, a ring mandrel, and I'll talk through each tool as I use them. Materials wise, so I'm obviously I'm working with the, the lovely cabochons that you get um, in the birthday calendar. I'm going to work with some, uh, some bezel strip in here, and that's going to set the stone. I'm also going to work with uh, some, if you've got some structural wire, so I've got some um, 1.5 sterling silver, and that's what I'm gonna make the ring with. And like I say, the solder as well, uh, flux, things like that, but we can go through that um, as we get through it. So I'm also gonna add in, because what, what on this setup here, what I'm not gonna be able to do is I'm not gonna be able to pierce out the, uh, the sheet so it's some sheet as well, sterling silver sheet. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna try and um, use an alternative to that if you don't have a saw and a bench peg. And so I'm gonna work with some, um, these are just little nail scissors. Um, and the great thing with these, I don't know if you can see, there we are. Can you see there's a slight curve to them? So we're gonna use those as well when we cut out the sheet. So I think that is pretty much it for, for uh, the, the materials we're gonna use and the tools that we're going to use. So I'm gonna start and hopefully go in a, in a nice order that we can follow. Um, so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you how to do your, make your ring. So this would be, if, you've, um, if you wanna make any sterling silver stacker ring, you can follow these instructions. So the first thing I want to do is, so if I just move this here, I'll move that out of the way a minute. What we're going to do is we're going to start and we're going to and, and make a, um, a nice shape for the ring and get it so that our soldering is, is really, really neat and tidy. Now to do that, what we want to do, so if I hold this one up here, so you can see here, what we're looking for is we want to get a nice, neat seam. But to get that, what we don't have to worry about straight away is getting it lovely and round. So what we can do is we're going to aim to make something sort of this sort of shape, which looks nothing like that, but then we're going to form it into a round. But by having that lovely straight edge there, that's going to make it easier to solder. So the first thing I'm going to do, if I take my, so I've got my 1.5 sterling silver wire. And if you've got D-shaped pliers, brilliant. If you haven't, you can use nylon jaw pliers or I'm very, very carefully gonna use my chain nose pliers. And I'm only saying carefully because I just don't wanna mark the um, mark the silver. So you could you could put some tape on there if you wanted to. So I'm just gonna bring, bring these in as if almost like to make, um, forget about a round shape at the moment. We're just gonna look and try and make that almost like a tic-tac shape or an oval shape. What you're looking for is you're looking for uh, a straight edge. So there are lots of different uh, uh, different charts, different ways of sizing the ring, um, and you can you can find those on the internet. And so give that to that mathematical calculation of uh, you're working out your ring size depending on the the, the gauge of wire that you're going to use. So you would you would work that out, cut your length of wire, and then what it does, it just makes it easier 
to get a nice seam there because the whole point of the soldering is we want to have that as a really really super neat seam so that when the solder goes into it it doesn't have to fill any gaps so we've got that edge there so what i'm now going to do is i'm going to now pop that down on the on the board and if we're thinking about the different ways that we're, we're going to solder so we know now we've got our we're looking at the stages of the soldering so we know we're going to have quite a few of those stages at least three so what we want to do is that our first lot of soldering going to work with the hard solder because that's going to go at the highest temperature so if i show you these you can see so i keep keep them my solder like this so you can see here so i've got my hard my medium and easy and what's going to happen with these is these were going to melt at different temperatures and i've cut them into little pallions there so little squares so the first lot of soldering that i want to do is going to be at the highest temperature so that's going to be with the hard so i'm going to open that up and you can see his tiny weeny little pieces there so i'm going to take that out so we'll take one of these out and pop that on there so if i just move that out of the way so what i'm going to try and do is i'm going to try and sandwich this so you're always looking for ways of getting it as neat as possible. So I might actually sit down for this. So I'm just going to sit down. Now you're looking to, you're almost going to sandwich that piece of solder in between the seam. So I'm just opening it up. I'm going to push that into there. Okay, so we now know, if we're thinking about the principles of soldering, we now know that that, is touching both sides. It's not gonna have to fill a gap. I'm just gonna move that round so that that is in there now. So you can see in there. You would actually spend a little bit more time getting it so it's nice and sitting straight. Um, that's a little bit wonky, but you get the idea that you're trying to get that solder in between. So what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna put this um, onto, onto the block. I'll pop that on there. So I'm going to put a little bit of the flux on. So let's get that on. And let's just pop that on there. So our first thing is, we'll get this on here. Now I'm going to start and get some heat. So what we're going to do is we're going to be concentrating on the front where that where that solder is. So I'm going to get a bit of heat in there. Now, ideally, by the fact that we've sandwiched it, what should happen is that that solder should stay in place. If sometimes we've got it underneath, what can happen is just the force of the torch or the flux bubbling up, it can sort of blow that solder away. But hopefully by sandwiching it like that, we can stop that from happening. So we're gonna look at the front and hopefully what will happen is we'll get even heat going all the way through it and then it will um, solder. So I've just, with my torch, I'm coming at the back here and now I'm gonna come quite quickly into the front. I'm gonna use the torch and the heat like a magnet and draw the solder across. So let's see, there we go. So let's see here. So let's take that, I'm going to pop it into the water. So if I just pick that up and we're going to hear it, lovely. So let's have a look at this. So now if we have a look, we can see that what we've got, it's a little bit because I hadn't got it so that it was um, straight. So it's a little bit skew with, but you can see there that that now has soldered across. So what we're left with now is obviously that, that tic-tac uh, tic shape. So what we wanna do is we wanna get it into the, into the nice round. So this is where, what we're gonna do, we're gonna start and just open it up. So I'm gonna use my pliers to start with. I'm just gonna open just to get it so it starts across and I can get it onto the ring mandrel. So you can see, I'm gonna bring that round. So it just means it's a little bit easier to solder and get that neat seam. But now we need to take it from that oval shape 
into the round. So by doing it like that, and you can see I'm bringing it down, that's going to do a couple of things. It's starting to make it round, but it's also making it a larger size. So I don't want to do that too much. I'm going to turn it over and do the same there. So you remember, always remember you're thinking about the ring as a full round shape so that we want it to be round as a flat and going across. So I now need to, I'm going to now go across and this will, it's a good test of your soldering but it's also, I need to make sure that that is looking good and straight from all angles. So I'm going to turn it round. You can see how that's starting to, to form. So if you've got it at this point, and maybe your original calculation was slightly off, you have got a bit of wiggle room in that you can stretch it a little bit. So you can see here, so I'm just going, I'm in between like I and K, I'm going to bring that down and turn it over and you can see it's going to go closer to the K. So that would be how you make the actual ring itself. So if we also, if what we want to do with this is that we're then going to uh, texture it, for example, so you can see, so on the one I've done, I have actually put a nice texture on there. So what that's also going to do is that can be very useful for adding the detail, but also if you feel like maybe it's a little bit too small, what this will do as well, that texturing of the ring shank, that's also going to enlarge it. So if we look again, so it's sort of sitting um, in between I and K, and we'll see how far it goes then. So I'm going to texture now. So I've got, this time I've got a metal hammer rather than the nylon hammer, and I'm just going round. If you need to tidy up the seam, then you can, you can do that, and you would have done all that before and just check it. But hopefully by using that sandwich method, you should have very, very little to clean up. Okay, so we can see now how already just with a few taps that's that's making it so it's it's getting larger as well. So you can see, you can see there. So I am actually going to take that off as well and we'll do it the other side. And if you want to, you know, you're thinking about this ring as a, a, a complete object. So you could, if you've got a metal block, you could just lay it down on the metal block and hammer around that side and that's going to give you that lovely texture as well and you can see it's even though it hasn't got any we haven't given it any sort of buff or polish yet you can start to see that that luster and that texture is coming through so where we've got to at this point this is our in, in making in in the project we've made our rings we've made the ring shank we textured it we've done one lot of soldering so we've got our first component which is the, the ring shank. So if we have a look, and what you could also do is, like I say, you can go in and you can, um, uh, you can buff out if you've got any uh, uh, little marks or you need to sort of um, get, pay a little bit of attention to that seam there. You would have done all of that. So we've got that first component. So what I want to start thinking about now is we've got, if we think about how the, the, the ring is, is built, so if I just pop that down there, the other com the other piece of the, um, the the ring is obviously the the focal piece, and that's the stone itself. So you can see here. So the stone that we're going to work with is a cabochon. So um, with the cabochon, we've got a lovely flat flat back to work with, which is going to sit really nicely uh, in the setting, and then we've got that dome that's going up and over. So the ideal way to set these is, is, I mean, you can absolutely work with um, prongs as well, but what we're going to do is we're going to do a uh, bezel setting. So what we need to do is we need to work, use some bezel strip, which is going to be here. So if we have a look here, and we're going to use this very, very fine silver, and you can see it's really lovely and malleable. And what that's going to do is that's going to follow the shape of the cabochon and then we're gonna rub that over the top so it secures it. So a couple of things you're gonna think about. There are, um, you might have different sorts of uh, bezel strip in your stash. So you can see the two different sorts I've got here. I'm just gonna pop the stone down a minute so I don't lose it. You can see I've got two different sorts of, of bezel strip here. So I've got the one that is, is much higher. So if I was working with say a really high cabochon, I'd probably choose that one. With this one, so it hasn't got, it's got a nice dome, so if I sort of hold it up there, you can see. So that's gonna, that would just absolutely swamp that, 
that stone. So I could I could cut it in half or I could file it down, um, but I've actually got this one, which is sort of that lower wall and that's much more suited um, to this stone. So just having a look, sort of looking at your uh, the materials you're working with and looking to see what's best suited. So it depends what you've got in your stash, but I'm gonna go with that, um, the shallower one. So if I, again, if I pop that down there, so I don't wanna lose it. So the, the, the idea of, of what we want with this with this wire so it's really lovely and fine it's it's nice thick wire um, but it's very very fine so what we'll be able to do is use our tools to push it over the stone but you can see there's a lot of spring in this and that we don't want that at all what we want is we want it to be really malleable and soft so that we can follow follow the the shape of the stone so to do that what you're going to do is you would then anneal so if I move that out the way, you would anneal the, uh, the bezel strip. So if we have a look at the difference, and I'll show you how we do it. So we can see we've got that spring there. So I'm just gonna pop that on, and we'll see how we anneal it. So we're just gonna add some heat to it at the moment. Okay, and we'll hopefully sort of see it, and it sort of just relaxes, relaxes the molecules of the metal, of the silver, and we don't want to get it so that we're going to um, melt it. We're just looking to get a bit of a glow on it and so it starts to relax. You might be able to see it actually at this end where it sort of is going to just relax into the board. And what this will do, this means that it's just going to be lovely and malleable for when we follow the shape of the stone. So I guess what you're trying not to do, if I concentrate at this end here, if I just take it so it's going too much, you can see so it's glowing, glowing red. We don't want to take it, you can see I'm starting, I've left the torch on for too long and I'm melting it. So we don't want to do that. We're, all we're looking to do is just get some heat into it, a little bit of a glow, and that'll be lovely and malleable. So you can see that's, that's what's going to happen. If you, if you didn't move your torch and you just kept it in the one place, what's going to happen is it's going to melt it like that. So you can see now the, the difference in that. So I'm just going to pop that to the side and we'll let that cool. So what I've done is I've already, I've already annealed this one and let it cool. So the one I'm using is the, is the, the, the finer one. So what I'm gonna do, so if I just move that out there, so I've got some sheet as well, so I'm just gonna um, pop that there. So if I get the stone, so now these are, these are lovely delicate stones. So what I wanna think about doing is the best way, the easiest way for me to follow the shape of that stone, because the, the bezel that I want, I need it to be quite snug not too tight but fairly snug so it's not going to sort of rig, you know wobble around in the setting but also so that I'm going to be able to get it into the setting. So I need to really really concentrate now on um, how I form this bezel wire around the shape of the cabochon. So if I were just sort of to start freehand uh, like this I might find it quite difficult. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a tool. So again if I pop that down I'm going to use my bail making pliers and you could use your round nose pliers if you've got those as well just to start off the curve so in this, thinking about what we've just done when we made our ring shank what we were looking at is we were thinking it's easier to get a neat seam on a longer edge on a straight edge so we're going to use that same principle that we did when we when we made the uh the ring as we're going to use that same principle when we're making the setting for this. So what I don't want to have, I don't want to have my soldered seam at the very narrow curve. I'm going to try and get it so it's on the edge of the oval. So I'm going to start, so I'm leaving a little bit tucked out of the, the pliers here, so just a little bit there, you can see it. Okay, and I'm just going to bring that round now. So now I'm going to give a bit of a curve. It doesn't matter if it's the wrong size at the moment, I'm just going to bring that and so I've got a slight curve here and I've helped myself there that I've got a nice neat curve and because this is so uh, pliable, malleable, what I should be able to do is just push that in and I can already see I do need to come and just I'm going to shorten that edge because it's gone too far down that way. So I'm just going to bring that round and then I'm going to follow 
the shape of the stone. And it's up to you whether, um, I mean, I'm standing up now, you could maybe sit down, do this on uh, you know, a flat bench or your table, whatever it is that you work on. Okay, so I'm just gonna bring that round. I'm gonna find my pen. So now what we're looking at again, so it's this sort of that you want it so that it's a good snug fit, not too tight, not too loose. And I'm gonna just make a little mark going down here. So I've moved up slightly because I, like I say, I want it on that, that longer edge of the, the cabochon there. So I'm just gonna hold there. I'm just gonna pop that down again. So if I just put that on there for a second while I get my, let me just get my snips. So what I'm looking for here is I wanna snip that off and I want a nice straight edge. So I'm gonna use my snips for this. So if we look, we've got the two lines there. I'm just gonna open it up just a little bit. I'm trying to keep it so that it's fairly straight. We can file it afterwards if we want to. And I'm going to turn it round. What I might do again is just bring this because we're going to snip a bit off the other end. So we can, yeah, that's fine where that's going to be. So I'm going to go with the, my first mark and let's snip that off there. Okay, so again, always, you know, when you've got two components, whatever you do, so if you're taking, adding bits on, taking bits off, always every time that you do something, go back and push it on, so, and test it. So I can already see, I probably need to take a little bit more off. So if I pop that down there, I'm just gonna open it back up. And you can see I've actually cut on the one side of the line, so I'm just gonna go back in and snip that off. So again, I wanna try and get it so that those cuts are quite straight. And still see I've got a little bit of an overlap. So I'm just gonna open it up, take a little bit more. I'm gonna come on the other side now, because remember we're still looking for that straight edge. I don't wanna cut it too close to the rounded edge of the cabochon. Okay, so let's see where we are now. That's looking a lot better. So again, we're thinking about those, the back to those principles of the soldering. What the solder can't really do, I mean, it can, but what we don't really want it to do is, is fill gaps. So if we think about it, that solder is gonna run up the seam, like capillary action, so the heat is gonna draw it all the way up. So what, what we need to do to help that is we want that seam, so we want the joins to be sort of sitting like that. If the join, if my hands are the bezel strip and it's sitting like this and our solder is here, it's got no chance of sort of, that's, that's a big gap to, for it to fill. Whereas if our joins are something like that, it's a lot easier. It's then got two sides to sort of be drawn up. So if my heat is here, it's gonna draw it all up. And so we stand a much better chance if those, if those seams are meeting. So what we're gonna do to get that is if I just use my, we don't need to worry too much at the moment about the shape of it because we can, we can uh, mould it back around the shape. So I'm just going to bring that round there. So what we want to do, you can see, so I've just given it a squash down. So you can see, oh, there we are. Let's see if it's held. There we go. So if we just hold that there, so I'm giving it a squeeze down and we want a good seam there so you can see it there there we are okay so what we want to think about now is we're going to put that down onto the block and we're going to solder that okay so again I'm going to try and get it so that it's sort of maybe facing uh, facing you and you can hopefully see it so that's going to go on here now this one again I'm going to use uh, I'm going to use a hard solder with this one so I'm going to take a again a small amount I'm going to pop that down on here. So this time, rather than sandwiching, what we're going to do is we're going to put it underneath, underneath the seam. So again, I want my flux. I'm going to pop some flux on here. Let's just get that off. And flux going across on the bezel wire. Okay. 
So I'm going to set that on here. So let's have a look there. And hopefully, I'm just going to come down at eye level. Apologies. And let's just pop that there. So hopefully, what's happening on that bit, I'm just going to spin it around so that I can see. What we want is we want that so that it's sitting right underneath that scene. Okay, so we're going to, there we are. So now if we watch that, and I'm going to start and get some heat into it. And if you can see the seam from the front, maybe you can see. So again, this is very, very fine, fine silver. And we're going to start and bring that round. So I'm coming quite quickly in. And when it's facing you, you'll be able to see. And there we go. Did you see it running up the seam? So if we just move that and transfer that over. So I'm going to let that pop that in the water. And let's have a look. Here we are. So you can see we've got now, and that is soldered there. Okay, so what you would then do is you need to clean that up a little bit. So I'm just gonna use, these are really, really useful. So I'm just gonna go with, I'm gonna just take a little bit of that off. So you can see I've got a little blob of solder on there. So I'm going to buff that up in exactly the same way that you would with your, um, your nails. So you can see, there we are, and that's starting to, to come up. So you can work your way through the numbers. So I'm just going to start and give that a polish up. Now it might have come, come out of shape, but it's okay because then you can pop it back onto the stone. And we can squeeze that in there and we can reshape it like that. Okay, so that's that gives you that first part of the bezel. So we've got this section. So where if we look at where we're at at the moment, we've got our ring shank, we've worked that we've done the bezel strip. So now what we need to do is we need something at the back of that of that bezel strip. So if I just pop that here, we know it fits the stone. So what we're going to have now is we're going to have, we've got our bezel setting, so we'll pop that to the side. And we've now got some sheet. So again, we're working with sterling silver. Um, and what we want to do is we want to solder this setting onto the sheet so that we've got a nice backing for that, that cabochon to sit in. Okay, so if I just pop that here. So what, what we want to do is if we think about that we've had, we've used hard solder on that seam. So what I want to do is I'm going to drop down now to use some medium solder. So this one is hopefully going to melt before the hard solder. So if I just undo this. So what I want to be doing is I'm going to take you would clean up all of your um, all of your bezel strip before before you do this. So you could see when I was going around and using my buffer or my files, anything like that, you get it so that it's it's completely neat and tidy, so you can access all the way around on the inside as well, so that you're happy with that and that it's that it's pristine and that you also know that it hasn't come out of shape and it fits around that cabochon. So you must do all of that before you then transfer it and you solder it onto that backing plate because obviously once it's on that sheet, you can't change the shape of it. Um, so we need to know that it that it is the right um, so that it's flat and it's the right shape to go around the stone. So what we want to think about is we're putting a, a, a very, a little piece of um, fine silver onto a thicker piece. So what we're going to think about doing is how we work with the solder. So if I just move this out of the way a second, and we've been working with pallions of solder at the moment. So I am going to work with my medium solder, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the little, um, Pallions. I'm going to pop them out onto the board. So if I just bring these out, so I'm going to take four of them. And hopefully you'll be able to see them. My board is a little bit well worn, but we can see we're looking in this area here. And what's going to happen? I'm going to move that out of the way. I'm going to heat these. And I'm going to take them from being flat pallions 
uh, to round balls and then I'll explain why I'm doing that. So we're just, I'm just looking in this area here and all I'm looking to do is just heat them up so they go from the flat into little tiny balls. So it's a little bit like um, granulation but you're doing it with your solder. So let's get those there. Okay, so if I just sort of um, explain what I'm what I'm doing, if if we've got our um, if we've got our uh, setting, so if we think about when we've got our we've got our, our sheet that's going here, and what we're doing is then we're then putting the bezel setting on top. So if we look at it from um, like a cross section, what we've got is we've got the wall of the bezel here. And then we've got the flat sheet here. If I put a little flat square in there, it's tiny weeny and I might not be able to see it. And I, all we know about soldering is we need, it, we need that solder to be touching the two pieces that we want to solder together. So I could put it here and it's touching the sheet, the, the bottom sheet, but it's actually, there's a bit of a gap in between that bezel strip. So if I, do what I've just done, which is, so I've got my flat sheet there, I've got the wall of the bezel strip, and I've made it into little balls. What's going to happen is I can push those little balls right up into that corner. So that what happens then is I know, because it's the rounded edge, I know it's touching this bit that I want to solder, and I also know it's touching that bit. So just by taking it from the little pallion, the flat square, into making it into that round, that's gonna really, really help me in that next stage. So if I just have a look here, and I am just gonna get down so that I can see them properly. Oops, sorry, there we go. So I'm gonna take my strip, I'm gonna pop that on. So I'm also going to just make sure that these haven't got too stuck on my board. So just free them up. So I've got four little balls there. Okay. So I'm just going to put a little bit of flux on here. So let's have a look there. I'm going to take my There's a strip. So again, we're looking for, you want to have it so that it's, it's nice and flat against the side. So again, you don't want any gaps around. So really spend some time so that you've got no gaps anywhere. So that might be that you need to flatten out your sheet. It might be that you need to file off uh, the walls of the, uh, the bezel strip could be a combination of those. So what I'm gonna do, and it's a little bit fiddly and you'll need good light for this, is I'm now gonna just bring in, drop those, the little balls into that setting. Okay, so I'm now gonna come over and just start to move these so that they're, remember what we need them to do is we need them touching the bezel strip and the sheet. So again, so I'm going to move this round. Try not to breathe too much. I'll sneeze on them. So I'm just going to bring that in. So if we have a look there, what you can see is that they're touching the sheet and they're also touching the strip, the bezel strip. I want to make sure that it's definitely, it's, I mean, it's fairly central. It's a little bit over on this side, but we should be okay. So now we're thinking about doing two lots of, of, of soldering here. We've got a very, very fine bezel strip, and then we've got a thicker sheet. So what, at one point, what I might do is I might lift it slightly to get a little bit of heat into, um, into the underneath. So let's start and have a look. So this one, we don't want too much movement in... I'm just going to move that over there. If you've got a tripod, you could use your tripod as well. So let's have a look. I'm just going to turn that off a bit and sit down so that I can see it. And try not to move it all out of the way. Let's have a look. Just move them back. I'm just going to move that in. And trust me, it's a lot easier when you're at home 
There we are. Right, let's have a look there. So I just want to get it in my tweezers. So if I need to pick it up. So just bring that in. Try not to have too much of the shakes. Let's pop that in. Right, okay. Let's move it into it. So we'll get a bit of heat in and then I'm going to try and pick it up. So they're going to move around a little bit. So what you want to try and do is, she says, is to try and, if you've got your tripod, you can get the heat from underneath. So I'm just going to heat a little bit and we're going to look in the middle of that. And hopefully what we'll start to see, can you see those balls are going all the way? And there we are. Let's see. I think we've still got, I'm going to put it in the water now so that you can see it. Let's, and let's have a good, well, it's a good sign that the strip didn't come off. So let's have a look here. So just by lifting it in my tweezers, I was able to get a bit of heat underneath and you can see that. And actually because you, the way it's oxidized, so you can see in here, there's a little bit, I probably would have taken it a little bit further for all those balls to, um, to properly solder. But you can see now, so that has put it onto the sheet. So you would then pop that in the pickle. So now what we obviously need to do is what we need, we need to get that so that it's now uh, in the shape that we want it and we all need to get it nice and neat. So I'm just going to move this here. So that would have all gone into the pickle. We know that the, that the, um, the stone fits in. So what we're going to do now is we're going to shape it so if I show you what we're ideally trying to get to, this is what we want it to look like. So it's much neater and it's, we're getting rid of those sharp edges. So this is the point where, as I was saying, that if you've got, the, um, if you've got a bench peg and a, and a saw, brilliant. If you haven't, this is quite a nice way of, um, of getting it so that you can get rid of those edges. So I just want to, so that I don't rust my scissors, I'm just going to dry this all off. And let's bring that round. Okay, so we've got the scissors. And like I said, so these are really, you know, sharp scissors. I think they might be um, nail or cuticle scissors, um, but they've got that lovely curve. And I'm gonna really make the most of that, that curve as I go round. So I'm gonna work it so I'm following the shape of the, uh, of the setting. So I'm just gonna start and I'm leaving a little bit of a gap. Now all of these, um, you might see little off cuts here. You keep all of those because they really, really come in handy when you want to do your granulation. So something like that, that little bit there, it's gonna have sharp edges, so just be really careful with it. But you could definitely use that for, for granulation. So I'm gonna pop that out of the way so I don't hurt myself with that. And I'm gonna come around here. So you see I'm leaving a, a little lip around the edge uh, probably not even a, a millimetre to be honest um, because I can go in and, and use my files for that. Okay, so I'm going to bring this round so you can see I'm using that curve and I'm working quite high up sort of where I've got more force uh, in the blade there and I can just go do a little bit more I think on that bit there, not too much so I don't want to misshapen the, the setting. So now if we look at, so that's how it's looking now. Obviously this is how we want it to look. So if I bring this one in here, so we need it to be nice and smooth and a straight edge there. So to do that, this is where you're going to be working. And I use my, I'm going to use different files. So you can see I've got a really, really sharp corner and edge there. So I'm just going to go in and follow that round. And we can already see, just with little bit, this is quite a coarse, obviously, big file there. Okay, so there we go. I'm just working my way round. Okay, so you would keep going like that. So you can see, so this is a, a, a coarse file, so then I would work and I'm going to go all the way down and you're getting rid of that lip going 
around. And you can see as you start going through your files, you're going to get rid of all of that. But you can see with just a couple of, you know, a few seconds of that, you, it's, it's quite easily done because it's not very, very thick sheet. That is then going to give me, so if I pop that down here, if I keep working, I'm getting rid of that, that lip and I'm working with my, if I take this one here, so I've gone down finer in my emery sticks or files, buffers, you can see I'm getting rid of that lip and polishing out any of the, the seams there. So we've now got a nice, neat setting for, for our stone to go in. So what's really tempting now is to think, okay, I need to make sure that my stone is, is gonna fit into that setting. What's really, really tempting but I wouldn't, wouldn't recommend is that you get your, get your stone and you push it into the setting because it's great if it fits, but often if it, if it fits snugly, you're not gonna be able to get it out. So if you, if you really, really, you know, you want to test it, what's a really good uh, tip, so if I just pop that down, if you've got a little bit of um, dental floss and take a little bit out, it's lovely and fine, but it's very, very strong. I'm going to lay that across in the centre and then I can make sure that when I test my stone that that dental floss is underneath so that I can push it in and then I can hold the two ends of the, of the dental floss and pull it back out. So what I wouldn't, I definitely don't sort of pop the stone in there and then just hopefully it'll come out because you don't want to have done all of this work and then and then you can't get get that out so we've got now we've got a nice um a nice setting it's lovely and neat we can access all of it because it's not on the ring shank at the moment so get it so that it's pristine and you're really really happy with it what we then want to do is we're then going to pop it onto our ring shank so we made the ring shank before so what we want to think about with this again going back to our thinking about the um, uh, when we're going to do our soldering and we're thinking about edges so we've at the moment we've got our ring that is like this and we've got a curve here and then we're going to put a flat bezel on there or a bit more of a wiggly line <laughs> there we are so it's this area here we're only leaving ourselves a very very small area of where we've got contact here so if we can just then so if we've got the the edge of we've got our ring shank here nice chunky ring shank heavy gauge of wire um, so what we're going to do is we're going to take a little bit of that off and give a flat edge there so that then when we put our bezel cup that we've made that goes on here we've got a lovely good solid surface area for that solder to to go onto here so what we're going to do is we're going to pop that on so if we have a look and we're going to set it up so i'm going to take my uh it can be a, a file so if i sort of go and i'm going to run that so that it's sitting on your block there i'm going to run that so that it's going along and all the time I'm looking, I want to try and make sure that it's flat and straight. But what that's going to do, if we have a look, that gives me that flat edge there. So you can see the difference. Now I'm also, what I'm going to do to keep it so it's nice and neat, if you can see on the inside here, that is actually my first soldered seam. So when we did it, when we made our, our ring shank all those uh, minutes ago, that was a hard solder. So I've then filed off on top of that hard solder, We've cleaned it all up, but we know that it's there. So that was the hard solder. So what we wanna try and do now is we're gonna use our easy solder. We've used medium uh, when we were making the, the setting. So we can now go down to the easy solder, which is gonna flow a lot, a lot sooner at a lower temperature than the hard and the medium. So if we have a look at this, to help ourselves when we're uh, setting this up, What we're going to do is we're going to use our uh, permanent marker and I'm going to make sure when I mark it out 
So I'm just going to run this line. So I know when I'm looking at it for sort of, um, and I can't see the, the underneath because that underneath will be connected to the bezel cup. So I'm going to bring that line down. So I know that when it's sort of sitting like this, I can see all the way around and I know where that flat edge is. Okay, so let's bring that in there. And this will burn off, so don't worry about that. But I know that that's where that flat edge is. So I'm going to pop that down for a minute. So we're going to think about where we want it sitting, where we want that ring shank sitting in regards to the, um, to the bezel cup. So do you want it portrait? Do you want it landscape? It's how, how, you, know, how you want it to sit. So if I'm going to, you could use your, if you've got a ruler, you can measure and we can mark out. So you can maybe mark out and let's bring that on there. So just move that off and we'll measure going across here. Just by doing that, it just means that it's a lot easier to see, especially when you're trying to set it up. You're trying to do a few things. So you've got your, you've got your torch, uh, you're looking about when, when your solder's gonna flow. Um, there's quite a lot to concentrate on. You're trying to be safe as well. You know, so by having those, those um, the, the permanent marker there, it's just a lot, makes it a lot easier. So now what I can do is, what I don't wanna be doing is obviously holding any of this. So this is where I'm gonna use my, um, third hand my reverse action tweezers so I can pop the pop the ring shank into the tweezers and I'm going to come down now at this point and just have a have a little look here so what I can do now is I can start to line this up okay so it takes a little bit of time to remember you're looking at this it's good it's it needs to be from all angles it needs to be so that it's it's neat and straight um, so I'm looking at it from the side, I'm looking at it from, um, from the top. So if I, I'm just going to put my head over it now, so I don't know if you want to see sort of where I'm looking now, because I want to see down above, above the ring. So if you can see, so I'm going to be looking down and I want to make sure that it's looking neat, straight from all angles. So that's really, really important. So although you're sort of at the final, the final bits now, it's best not to rush this bit. Um, so that you can then get it nice and neat. If you find that you have done it and it's a little bit skew if you can heat it and take it off, um, you know, you, you can do that and just pop it in the pickle. So what I haven't got in here is I don't have any, um, I don't have pickle. So in between each of these soldering stages, what I would have done is I would have had, um, I would have pickled everything, which would just take off all the uh, the oxide. So I'd say troubleshooting, if you find that you're having problems with soldering, um, and what you need to do is, is, is make sure, you know, the pickle, that you've got solder on there, that everything's touching, that you've remembered to use flux. Um, but sometimes if you don't pickle in between, that oxide will just get, get in the way. So it's just thinking about, have I done this? Have I done that? Almost like having a, a checklist. So again, so I'm gonna come over the top and have a look. Okay, so we've used our easy now. So I'm gonna start and you can hopefully see, I don't have very much of the, the ring shank in, that, um, in the tweezers. So I don't want those tweezers to steal, uh, steal the heat. So again, I'm just gonna look over. I've sandwiched my solder in between. I'm gonna start to get a bit of heat into the ring shank because remember that ring shank I've got a lot of chunky silver in there and then I'm going to come in quite quickly it's a bit in the tweezers I'm going to start to come down and we're looking to see hopefully we'll see that it flows in between the the ring shank and the setting itself so get quite a bit of heat in there and let's see how this is going again there we are it's moved a little bit but i think that's gone so let's have a look let's undo that give it a wiggle and we'll do the test popping it into the water see if it falls apart you never know there we go let's have a look so it moved slightly so you can see so i would probably 
unless I'm deciding and trying to uh, blag that this is sort of a little bit organic, which I don't think I should, because it's a really regular shaped stone. And so we would see that. I would probably heat that back up, remove it, put it in the pickle and, and do it again. Because you can see it's slightly, it's gone a little bit skew with so there are ways of you know it's not sort of it's not completely ruined you just take it off uh, put it in the pickle uh, warm water or clean it off and then um, just just start again but that's how you set it up um, and to, to do that so that leaves us if I just move this out of the way let's have a look where we are that has given us something that once you've start once you've polished um, polished it up that's going to give us something that looks like this. So you can see beautiful sterling silver, um, and then it's got that lovely bezel cup on there. So what we're going to do now is we're thinking about. So if I just get move that as well, so move all the hot stuff out of the way. So tools wise, now I'm going to work with. I'm going to work with a couple of burnishers. Um, and I'm going to work with my square pusher. You can use a bezel rocker if you want to. Um, I, I'm going to do it with uh, the square pusher and the burnishers. So I'm just going to pop the lid on here. Okay. So again, this might be, if I just pop this in here, we're now looking at, it's the balance of, we want to have that, that wall of the bezel so that it's going to sit and come over the stone but we don't want it too high so it's going to cover all of the stone so i'm just going to make sure that's sitting in properly so i'm just going to bring that over so we'll do that so again we're going to sit just pop the stone in and i think that should be okay now if you feel that the um if you feel that it's a bit too high what you can do is you can um file a little bit off but what I'm going to do now is I'm going to just push this in and let's just have that in there oh I had visions then of it not of it not fitting in there we are after all that I've managed not to ruin the soldering and I'm just going to push that in there so that has now gone in. It's a little bit high. If we look at it from, from that angle, so what I, would have, uh, what I would recommend you do is have, that, have that, um, the floss in there. You're testing it. What you want is you want it just the, the wall to be coming up just as the curve comes up. So this is looking a little bit high, but you can, you'll be able to see the, 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 the principles of it. So we want to make sure that it's lovely and secure in there. And what we're looking for now is we don't want it to be moving around. So I'm going to start and you can see again, so I'm, I'm holding the stone. I would recommend that you've got good support of your um, elbows as well. And I'm going to use my pusher and you can see I'm just really, really tiny, tiny work area. You can see here and I'm going to go be going across and just up and start to push okay so it's sort of like a pushing up and a rock and a roll and what you're looking to do is push and thin that silver I'm just going to tighten that a little bit so you don't want it moving around so I'm pushing that so it's going over the side of the, the stone. Now you can already see here, what we don't want is we don't want a frill. So this might be good in that you might get to see that. So if that frill happens, what I'd need to do is I've got too much silver there, so I need to file a little bit off. That's why it's really quite important that not to have it too high. So mine is actually way too high there. We'd need to see a lot more of that, the curve. Because what's gonna happen is as I push that silver over, you can see on the stone there, What's going to happen is that's going to go further and further over the stone. So I would say if yours look, looks, if you're making a long and yours looks anything like mine, definitely um, file, some, file some of that silver over. So I can see I've got that frill area there, so I need to go in and work there. So what's going to happen is I'm pushing it, pushing it round, and I need to make sure that I'm sort of the direction that I'm pushing, that I'm pushing it up and over as well. So. We don't want any of those angles. So I'm just going along and getting rid of all of those gap. So if I'm pushing the silver over into this way, you can see, so I need to go there and I'm gonna 
again push and rock and roll that silver so it's going and following over the side and the shape of the cabochon really so you've got a nice edge around there so you don't want any angles in this remember we're working in a lovely oval shape and hopefully what you can start to see is you can see how at the edge of here it's you can see it's sort of it's, it gets a little bit more um it's got a little bit more luster you can start to see how i'm pushing it with the the steel of the of the pusher against that soft silver and i'm going to work my way over and we can see how that's going so i would say couple of tips you know I'm standing up now I would I would recommend sitting down so and, and you're thinking about um, supporting your elbows thinking about your posture as well with this um, remembering to breathe because you can go into you can go into the zone uh, you know you've put all this work in you want to make sure that you you know you try and relax at this point as well what you're looking for though is you don't want to be scratching the stone either so i really am sort of working my way over it's it's slow movements and they're controlled as well um it's nothing is it's nothing you know speedy or heavy pressure um i am sort of putting a bit of force but it's quite controlled and my fingers are here supporting it i've got the the the, the pusher is in the the ball of my hand here so that's where a lot of that force is coming from so what will start to happen is that the top edge is going to start to thin out so I'm now moving just up a little bit. So I'm not resting on the clamp now, so to come over at an angle. And I'm just working my way around to make sure that I'm getting rid of all those gaps, those edges. And what you're looking to, to remove is the gap that is in between the silver bezel strip and the stone. And you'll be able to see it, sort of like a, depending on the color of your stone, but it's like a darker area. You're looking to get rid of all of that. And I'm going to keep working my way so it's looking nice and even. And let's bring this round. So when you've done that, and you can start to see it, so it's going. So it's the straight edge, and then you can see how it's starting to curve. So if we look at it from all all angles, you can see there how that is starting to. To sit in nicely so a test that we need to do as well is we're just i'm just going to pop my finger and just i'm all i'm doing is I'm, I'm giving it little little rub like genie in a lamp little rub in there if it moves that's that's we haven't done it enough we it mustn't move in there so i'm just going to keep keep going a little bit more and you'll know when you've um when it's when it's set nicely because you'll be doing that and it won't move at all so I'm just going all the way around, having a look at it. It's looking like it's sitting quite nicely. Again, so you can see, if I show you there, you can see the angle that I'm coming at all the way around with that pusher. So I'd started, when I first started, I was going like this, and now I'm more coming up and following that curve there. So I'm going to work all my way around. When you're happy with that, that's when you're going to work with your, whether you've got an agate uh, burnisher or you've got your metal burnisher. And we're really going to go in and give that. So you can see again, so I'm supporting my elbows really firmly, bringing that round and giving it a really nice shine. So if I do half of it, hopefully you'll be able to see the difference there so you can see I'm working with a curved burnisher so we can see this is the side I've done and this is the side I haven't but it's going to give it that lovely bright shine and again it's going to smooth the silver all the way over and get rid of that little lip that's there so a couple of tests that we've got is that little genie in the in the lamp there and then along the side and we don't want a rough edge there and that then will give you that beautifully set bezel set cabochon so hopefully you've enjoyed that nothing has gone wrong which is amazing for me so yeah there we go thanks very much jewelry makers